Father Lord, we thank you. We worship you. Ancient of days, we exalt you. We honor you for today because your name is highly lifted up. There is no searching of your understanding. Your ways are past finding out. O oh Lord, you are our God. Though Abraham have no knowledge of us, indeed, you are our God. We trust in you. The Bible said they that wait upon the Lord are like my Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. That as much as surround Jerusalem, so is the Lord himself round about his people. That means the century of the wicked cannot rest upon the land allotted to the righteous. So that the righteous will not put forth his hand to do that which is evil. The Lord will do good to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. As we gather together in this open heart fellowship where we train the trainer. Lord, we ask for your grace to be sufficient for us. We are the Holy Spirit to lead the way. Father Lord, as many that come to this program seek, we ask for your healing mercy. As many that comes with a body, let that body be rolled away. Father, I believe in you. And I know with you all things are possible. Even today, Lord, let impossibility become possible in the life of these ones. This I ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brethren, you are welcome once again to this Open Heart Fellowship. This is opportunity we meet together once a week, every Saturday, to train the trainer. Because the Bible says, He that watereth should also be watered. Iron sharpeneth iron. So does the man sharpen the countenance of his brother. People that feed others in the feed, the evangelists, the missionaries, the pastors, the team leaders, the ushers, they need also to be fed with the word of God. And that is the reason why today we have an exciting topic. Before we start, I will want to invite all of you to this program, which we have starting from 30. 24th of August to 25th of August in Uppsala. But if you are watching nationally, the program starts from the 23rd to 25th of August. And the topic is Unlocking of Destiny. Unlocking of Destiny. So I will be the host. I will be speaking. And other pastors also will be speaking with me. And by God's grace, just come. Whatever be the problem in your life, whatever that situation you are dealing with, just bring it. Bring it to the throne of grace. Our God is able to meet you at the very point of your needs. Our God is not the respecter of person. And there is no impossibility with him. Just come the way you are. Brethren, today I am excited to, to tell you we have another wonderful teaching. And today's teaching topic is the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord. Why is it necessary for a believer to hear the voice of the Lord? Because sometimes the voice of the Lord has been confused over the histories and century. Throughout the Old Testament now, people claim to hear the voice of the Lord. Especially in desperate situations. In a time of battle. When the enemy surrounds them, a man who even lost the way and has departed from the Lord sought so much to hear the voice of the Lord, even when God has abandoned him to the extent he went to Edom to consult a wish so that he can hear what a prophet of the Lord has to say. That is how serious it is because the voice of the Lord can make impossibility possible, the voice of the Lord can make things right. The voice of the Lord can change the character of a man. The voice of the Lord can change destiny. Sometimes you want to do what is wrong and everything lies in your hands and suddenly you heard a voice from the Lord telling you that is not the right way. The voice of the Lord, though persuasive, are not over persuasive 
And the voice of the Lord does not speak ten times. The Lord speaks once. And you can hear him as often as you want. Because that wounds will keep ringing in your head. It sounds as if you are hearing him every minute. But God speaks once. And the word of the Lord are tested. And they can be trusted in time of difficulties. The voice of the Lord can bring solution to impossible situation. The voice of the Lord can make matters met in a flash of time. The voice of the Lord can bring life to laughless objects. The voice of the Lord can make Aaron rod grow flower. So it doesn't mean what you are going through. Whether there is life in it or there is death in it. As long as you hear the voice of the Lord, life can come to that situation. And I pray for you today that as you hear the voice of the Lord coming from my mouth, that life will begin to grow into your lifeless situation. Is that one barren? You have been called barren, just like Elizabeth was called barren. Today, the voice of the Lord will bring life into your womb and child will be born from you. Or what situation are you going through? Is your situation so deadly that the doctor said, just go and relax. Prepare in three or four months time, you will be dead. I tell you today, the voice of the Lord can bring life to that situation. And I tell you today, hearing the sound of my voice, you will not die. You will live to declare the glory of the Lord. The voice of the Lord can mix things that are not possible in business to become possible. Things that are not possible in ministry to become possible. The Bible says one will chase a thousand. And two will put ten thousand to flight. Let's do the mathematics. It's not possible for one to chase ten. We're not talking of hundred years. We're talking of a thousand. How possible is it for one to chase a thousand people? And for two people to put ten thousand men to flight? We are not just talking of wrong. They run faster than their leg could carry them. Just two men. For one man, for a thousand men to run away for one man, you should know that those people, they are rock have sold them. Because if they are rock, we are rock in the first place. It is not possible for one man to chase even ten men. Not to talk of one, chasing a thousand. And the Bible is saying that if God is your rock, two people will chase, put 10,000 men to flight. It doesn't matter their strength or power. It doesn't matter whether they are giants or they are little men. Two will put 10,000 to flight. Because do you know why? The voice of the Lord is strong enough to make the mountains met in the presence of the Lord. Today, I want us to get a quick quote from the book of Psalm 33. Psalm 33 from verse 7. He said, he gathered the waters of the sea together as a heap. He gathered the water of the sea together as a heap. That means God is so powerful that when he speaks, he's able to gather the water. You and I know that you need a bucket or a basin to fetch water and to put it together in a place. But the water in the sea can be gathered together as a heap, as if you are gathering a rock or stones together. But that can only happen by the authority and the voice of the Lord. And now, He lay up the depths in a storehouse. The depth of the sea, he gathered it together, put it in the store, so that it will not break forth and overcome the sea, the earth. The earth, the sea is twice bigger than the earth. What do you think if the sea were not bounded by God? 
The earth will be overrun in a second. But the truth is, the voice of the Lord preserved the ocean. Now, let's go further in verse 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in aware of him. Do you know why? The trees, the stones could praise him. You know, some people will say, God has done me this evil. I will not serve him. And do you know what God said? He said, even the stone can cry out. The stone. God is not begging for worship. He has made uncountable angels in heaven that are at his service. And they worship him day and night. They never stop to sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, God Almighty. For all the earth bowed in adoration to him who was and is and is to come. So there is nothing he needs from man. We need something from him because it is his spirit that gave us life and it is his spirit that held us together. When he removed his breath from us, we died and we returned to dust. For dust we are, and to dust we will surely return. Man in a place of honor, having gold, silver, diamond, and having not God, is like a beast that perish. And his days are like that of a beast of the faith, or the foes of the earth, who know not when he comes and when he departs. But they that know their God, they are like Zion. They cannot be removed, but they abide forever. As much as surround Jerusalem, so is the Lord round about his people. Though behind the world is so blank, you cannot see him. But he surrounds you. Because if certain things happen in the scriptures, I want to point it to a time come when the armies of Syria sought for Prophet Elisha to catch up with Elisha because he has done great things in the sight of the king of Assyria. Because he was telling the king of Israel what the king of Assyria does in his birth chamber. And the king was displeased by this. And he sent soldiers to catch up with Elisha. And when the servant arose in the morning and he saw that the mountain was surrounded by thousands of Assyria's army, just to catch up one prophet. And the servant, out of fear, cried out. He said to him, Alas, master, for we perish. There are situations in life where you will have to cry out, where you will have to seek for the voice of the Lord. Because fear has engulfed your spirit. But what's that the master, the master who was focused on the voice of the Lord, not what he sees. What did he do? He hear a voice. And the voice of the Lord was mightier than thousands of so Assyrian soldiers can be around about him. And he prayed that God should open the eyes of the servant to see what he sees. What did he see? He saw that the heavenly hosts, they were stationed around about the mountains. But was the servant seeing the heavenly host? No. He was, his eyes was open to see the physical soldiers that ran about him. Why did I bring this into this teaching? There are so many of us, instead of looking at what the promises of God has in store for us in our lives, we focus on our problem. We see the size of the enemy, the boots they wear, the size of their weapon. How big is their gun and their bomb? How strong are their muzzle? And how they will take us down with a flash? But we never really take time to look at the size of God. The greatness of the omnipotent and omniscient God. The one and the only wise God. The God who understands the mystery of darkness. The light dwelleth with him. And that is the God you should reverence. 
but this prophet did something contrary to science. Instead of counting how many of the sons of the prophet we fall in a single day, rather he looked up to heaven to see where his help come from. And that's why in situation, I remember when I was in difficult situation, I cried unto the Lord, and the Lord said to me, Stop looking at the trouble. Look up to the hills where your help come from. And indeed, since that day to today, I don't look at the size of my problem. I look up to the hills where my help come from. Because I knew the he is bigger than I am. And if the hill is bigger than I am, it must be bigger than my enemy. So the same situation applies to your problem. When you start focusing on things that does not exist, the problem are only existing in your mind. And they exist because your mind tells you. Oh, somebody will say, but I am sick. How did you know you are sick? Because your body told you so. And your mind believes in it. And because of that, you are set it. And as a result, you begin to act sick. But what happened if your mind told you, your body tells you you are sick, but your mind says something contrary? Say, by his stripes I am healed. And you act like somebody that is well. What do you think God will do? In a matter of minutes, you will be healed. Because your mind acts what you look like. In Just like in schools, exams are not set because the teacher hates the students and they want all of them to fail. Because those some students may think it that because they did not spend time to review their homework and assignment. The same thing happened in Christianity. When trouble comes your way, God did not put trouble on your path. Because he wants you to fail as a Christian. The reason why trouble exists is so that you can have your victory and your miracle. So that, because miracle is not the problem. Miracle is the result of your exam. And for results to be given, you have to pass the tests of trial. And without passing the test of trial, you can never reach perfection. Which is the miracle you are seeking for? Everybody wants to live on the realm of glory. But nobody wants to live on the realm of long suffering. Long suffering is what brings glory. You can never reach glorification if you don't go through the mountain of... If you don't go through the valley of tongues and tissue. The valley of bacon. And if you don't go through the valley... You will never reach your glory. And for you to reach Abdullah, you must first dwell in Ziegler. So God expects you to reach your place of destiny. But you cannot reach there except you pass through some mountains and tongues. And those tongues are not put there because God wants you to fail. No. They are put there because He wants to promote you. Because if Food is so abundant, you will lose the taste of food. But when you struggle for your food and you work hard for it, when you eat it, it is sweet in your mouth. The same thing with your miracle. When you labor for your miracles, when they finally happen, you appreciate the God that gives you sign. And that is exactly the reason why you need to see God, not your trouble. When we were in school, a little child wanted to jump, and a bar was set at about two feet. He jumped and he crossed. They raised it to about four feet. And he tried to jump, and he threw away the bar. He tried it again. He said to the teacher, I can't. The teacher said, I have seen you jump before. You can, but throw your mind over the bar, and your body will follow. And the child heard that word, my mind over the bar. How do I do that? And my body will follow. The child reached there, he looked at the bar, and he saw himself on the other side, 
without falling it. And he tries his body, and the body follows his mind. And he was on the other side, and he crossed the back. So the same thing applied to your Christian faith. By the time you imagine impossibility out of every situation that comes your way, all your problem will be impossible. It will be impossible for your pastor. It will be impossible for your children. It will be impossible for your life. Even things that are naturally easy for others will be impossible for you because you see only impossibility. But when you are the kind of person, when you look at a problem and you say, wow, it is tough, but my God is tougher. And when you look at a situation, you say, this situation looks impossible, but my God, all things are possible with him. And when you are that kind of person, nothing in this world will be impossible for you. You start turning problem into opportunity. Because when God gives you three trouble, that means he has prepared three miracle for you. But when you are a pessimist person, when you see three trouble, you cry three to cry. Because why? Each day for one of the trouble. But if you are a child of God who understands and hears the voice of the Lord, rather than crying three cry, you look at possibility of telling miracle and you pray to God for telling miracle since I've been a Christian and know the truth I prayed and it happened and people always ask why is it that whenever we you pray it happens I say because I don't doubt what God can do because I have known God since I was a child and I know he obeyed his word and he's honor his word even more than his name. I say, but when, for example, when we were young in the village, when the witches come in the night to say in the name of Jesus, they run away. I say, but God honor his name, his word, even more than that name. If the name of Jesus till today, that was named more than 2,000 years ago, till today still chase witches away, how much will his word make impossibility possible? That's why the word of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, they run into it and they are safe. Why is it only the righteous that can be saved from the word of God? Because of the voice of Christ. Because there is what we call in theology, the law of expositional constancy. That means the Holy Spirit tends to use Indian consistently throughout the scripture. What it says in Genesis is consistent with what he's going to say in Revelation. God does not change his voice. When somebody comes to there and gives you a prophet, say, God said, your wife is going to give birth to two sons. Tomorrow he come back and say, God says, he's no longer going to be a son, he's going to be a daughter. Be careful of such a person. Because God does not change his voice. And if God changes his voice, it's not possible. Rather, he will change man. And God does not do anything without a reason. There is no prophecy that is born out of mystery. God cannot come to a man tomorrow and say, I see that tomorrow you are going to die and not give him the reason why. God speaks with specificity. I have dealt with God for the past 30 years. And for those 30 years, God speaks with specificity. God does not change his word. The word of the Lord are sure and they are true. If there is any time I was disappointed, I disappointed myself, not God. God has never said a thing that doesn't come to pass. And that is exactly what the servant of the Lord focused upon when he saw the army. Who told you he never knew that the Assyria, a man that could cease under the bed of a king house. Are you telling me he did not see the soldier that were outside his tent to capture him? Why didn't he run away before they come? He did not see that they would come. And why did he not escape before they are coming? That is the greatest irony in the scripture. 
And I will tell you the reason why he did it from. Because the book of Psalms, uh, of Proverbs says, when the king is after you, do not leave your place. Because running from a king is like running from an army. Where will you go that his hand will not reach? Where will you hide yourself that he cannot sort you out? But the prophet understood this. But instead of running, he ran to the one rock that was higher than that of the king. And that rock was God. He was busy inside house, hearing the voice of the Lord. While the servant was busy outside, lamenting the soldiers that came to capture him. They didn't come to capture the servant, remember? They came to capture Prophet Elisha. But Elisha was busy inside the house, seeing the chariot and glorifying God. While his servant was busy, crying for the noble, Alas, alas, master, we perish. Which part do you want to be? Among those who always perish because they see affliction and suffering? Or among those who intercede to hear what the Lord has said concerning that situation? But your determination will determine your attitude as a Christian. If you are among those, the Bible says, they that know their God shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. The Bible said, they that understand will instruct many. It takes people who understand to be able to instruct people about the things of God. But if you are a fearful person, how will you instruct others? When the enemy comes, you are the first to run. I was in a situation like that once. When my member even questioned whether I prayed before leaving home. Because affliction came. They saw the victory of the Lord. They saw the glory. But when affliction came, they forgot all the days of glory. They forgot how many people were healed. They forgot the blessing that the Lord reigned upon them in the camp. Because affliction has set in. Because I tell you, and it's not their fault. Affliction have a way of making a wise man, the wisest of man, a foolish man. When affliction show up, even a wise man lost his sense of reasoning. That's why you need to hear the voice of the Lord, not the voice of Satan. Because Satan is a guest in every home. He's just looking for somebody that will open the door and will say, please, can I just stay at your door and give me water to drink? Before you bring the water, it's at your parlor. And before you come back from the kitchen, it's at your bedroom. And that is how he operates. But if you are a child of God, who hear the voice of the Lord, you'll be able to tame the beasts at his source. That is the specificity that the servant of the Lord saw when he said to the servant, Instead of allowing the fear in the servant to be transferred to him. Because fear is contagious. Fear is like a virus. When one man in a room is afraid, if you don't do something about that fear, before you know the whole room is afraid. Because fear is contagious. And he saw the fear in his servant trembling, changing color. He said, I have to do something before this fear jump out of my servant and enter me. And what did he do? He looked up to God and said, God, I pray thee, open the eyes of my servant. Open the eyes of my servant. Why did he pray that God should open the eyes of his servant rather than God help my servant to stop being afraid? No. It will not work. Because fear is something you allowed into your system. Praying that God should take it away is telling God to take away your free will. And God does not take people free will. But rather, what will change the fear is what you see. The only thing that can remove fear from the heart of a man is what his eyes sees. 
when people are so much afraid about sickness and affliction, tell them about the miracle God has done in your life. That's why the Bible tells you faith comes by hearing. Because how does faith come? Faith comes to defeat fear. And for fear to be defeated, faith needs to be installed. And that means you need to hear something, some good news. How God turned some pain into progress. When you hear that, you will forget your pain for some time and begin to glorify God. That is exactly what Elisha did. Somebody will say, who instructed him? It was not in the New Testament. It was in the Old Testament. He didn't have volume of Bibles like we have today. But he has the Holy Spirit like we have. And the Holy Spirit, like we learned last week, is the incubator where the bread are baked. And without him, bread cannot be baked. The Holy Spirit is the place of idea. Your idea cannot be manufactured without him. And if you need anything to be manufactured, you need to manufacture it in the factory of the Holy Spirit. He is the one that bring things to your remembrance is the one that enhances your memory is the one that teaches you all things and when he teaches you he does not lie and that is exactly what the servant of the lord did he looked up to heaven and said god open the eyes of my servant and what happened when the eyes of the servant opened was there still fear in him no the fear disappeared he saw something glorious. He turned from fear to saying, praise the Lord who give him praises. Because why? He saw that before the king make a decision to send warrior to capture the prophet of the Lord, that heaven has made decision to send hosts of heaven to secure the prophet. And that is what I'm telling you today. That before a problem was assigned to you, the solution has been registered in heaven. And why was that problem assigned? So that God can take glory. God wants to take glory in your pain. God wants to take glory in your shame. God wants to take glory in your disability. The decision is yours. Do you want God to take glory or you want to die with your problem? If you want to die with your problem, God is not going to stop you. But if you want him to take glory, he's going to take glory in your shame. And he's going to take glory in your pain. When men stand up against you and they say, let's see who will deliver him from our hands. Look up to the hills where your help come from. Your help does not come from those men. Always know one thing today. That heaven does not send a problem that does not have solution. That when problem is coming your way, the angel of solution is following the problem at the back. And that's why God told you that he's not going to create solution to your problem today. That he has created them in advance. Trouble you are going to have 10 years from now. God has created the solution today. That's why it is possible. To cancel all your problem. On the altar of prayer. 10 years in advance. 20 years in advance. Why? Because. Before the problem come. God has created solution. If you know about tomorrow, you know about your 10 years from now, you will not be afraid when the devil tells you today is your end. Because you check the picture from the map God gave you. And you see, God showed me 10 years from now. And the devil is telling me I'm going to die tomorrow. That means it does not match. 
It cannot happen. Because I have the map of God. The map of the spirit cannot be wrong. Then you learn to challenge the devil. In confidence and boldness. The Bible told me. That there is no barren in the land. And when I come across a woman and tell me. For the past 20 years I've been married. No issue. All I need to say your problem is too easy. Just go home. Right? Next year you have a charge. Do you know why? Because the Lord told me that there is no barren in the land. Because I have the map. Do you have the map? I believe we all do. The Bible is the map. Search the scriptures. In day you think you have life. They all testify of one person. God. In the church, what my friend was saying, every Sunday before I speak to you, I know I make sure I hear from God. I go to the mountain and I saw the face of God to make sure I hear from God. I say, thank God. Wonderful. That means you have to fast seven days a week for one message. Seven days and a year. We have 52 weeks in a year. And that means you have to fast 52 more 52 weeks to hear God 52 times. That was wonderful. That means you fast throughout the year. No eating. I just laugh. Then he called me and I said, Randall, I pick up my Bible. So if you want to hear from God, read the scriptures. Search the scriptures. They are written verbally from the word of God. They are the letters. The Bible says the letter kill it. But insight into those words bring life. God's word are hidden behind the test. Search it. Read it. Compare it with your situation. Just like you compare newspaper with today's events. Compare the Bible with your life. If anything in your life that does not match the test, Deny it and cast it out because it cannot come to pass. Because the Bible says, Who is he that speaketh and it cometh to pass when my God has not commanded it? Before anything can happen in my life, I don't care what doctor says. For the past 20 years, I've never known what doctor looked like. I said, Maybe I want to take some drugs just to rest. Because they don't decide my fate. I decide my fate. I decide whether I grow old or die now. I decide what I do next. Not the devil. Not the doctor. Not the government. But God. God is the creator. Science did not create me. I don't care about the theories. I don't care about... How many calculations in mathematics? Man assemble figures together and they make it what they want it to look like. But God speaks with sanctity. That's why the voice of the Lord is sure. The reason why today we title this topic the voice of the Lord is so vast that I cannot speak about the entire teaching. And I hope by God's grace we'll be able to repeat part two by tomorrow of the same voice of the Lord. This voice of the Lord is something that I cannot teach in a hurry. Because it's sharp more than any two-edged sword. It can tear the heart, bring out solution, intent from the mind. The voice of the Lord was what turned a king that the whole world honored into a beast for seven years. The voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord spoke to Aaron and one ate him up. The voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord said to Pharaoh, let my people go. That if you will not let them go, I will slay the even thy firstborn. And he's not cheating around. And the voice of the Lord smit Pharaoh 
and even his firstborn. The voice of the Lord does not compromise. His word cannot return to him empty. It's just like the rain. Many of us have heard the rain fall on the ground. I wonder what happened next. The rain cannot return to the heaven until it water the earth and bring forth food to the eater and seeds to the sower. So is the word of the Lord. When it go forth, it cannot return to God empty. It must accomplish the purpose why God sent it. That's why as a believer, you must hold on to the word. Because the letter itself kills. The letter and the test. I was in a service where before I speak in the mission feed, a man will repeat the entire Bible verse for me. But I, if I tell you the characteristic of such a man, you will not believe it. This man knows the scriptures. He knows the test. But does he have insight? No. He knows everything in the scripture. But he worship idol. The commandment that he quoted to me say, Thou shalt not make unto the Lord thy God any graceful image in likeness of anything in heaven or earth or under the earth. But you know, this man was a prince to an idol. Despite he knows the scriptures, despite he knows the letters, but he has no insight into the word. Because the word of the Lord are not the letters. They are not the letters that kills. The word of the Lord proceeds from a heart that is sanitized. And that's why the Bible said it is a strong tower. Only the righteous can run into it and be saved. The word of the Lord is not for sinner. I have seen some people, they carry Bible, they want to go and kill. God is not going to support evil. The Bible says God is of a purer eyes than to behold iniquity. You cannot want to do evil. You say, let us pray and read the Bible. Then tomorrow we can kill somebody. God does not support evil. Because he said in his word, let justice roll down like a river. But you know what he said about righteousness? Like ever flowing stream. Righteousness in your life should flow for everlasting to everlasting. But justice, let it just roll down like a river. And that is God speaking to you. But today we have Christians. Who avenge themselves. They take vengeance from the Lord. If you avenge yourself, why did you need God in the first place? God is serve you no good. If you are able to fight for yourself, why would God waste his time? He has a lot of business to do. Why would he waste time on you if you can take care of your problem? If you know how to solve your problem, why pray? But if you, if you are like me, who need God help, go on your knee. But if you know you can fix it, don't disturb God. If you know you have a better insurance, why look for a pastor to pray for you when you are sick? If you know that your hospitals are in good hand, why do you need miracles of healing? Go to the doctors. God is not against you taking paracetamol when you have headache. But whenever you knew that sickness you have is that which the doctor has no name. We're not even talking of cure. They don't know the name. Because there are some sickness the doctor don't know the name. So they begin to check the dictionary to give it a name. So you cannot even name it. No talk of getting the cure. So when you are with such situation, then come to God. God will fix it. Whenever the doctor cannot handle it, the government told you there is no solution to your financial issue, come to God. But if 
they tell you they can handle it, go to the government. Go to God. Go to the doctors. But if God is the only solution, then come. Because God will not want his glory to be given to another. Because he's a jealous God. When you take paracetamol, you now say, in Jesus' name, Amen. And um, the sickness finishes, you say, ah, that paracetamol work. The glory is no longer for God, it's for this paracetamol. But when you knew that doctor tell you there is no cure, and the tears running from your cheeks reach your back, <laughs> and when you come to God, God says you are healed. And you believe it and you go home and you check the doctor check next and say, I thought your sickness has no name. But what happened? You say, My God did it. So God will show his glory. That is the situation God can intervene. But if your situation is that, which man can intervene? Go and meet man. Go, don't, don't worry, God will not be angry that you have gone to meet man instead of him. No. In fact, he will be happy because you reduce his stress. After all, we have more than 7 billion people on earth crying to God at the same time. So if your voice is minus, it will not do God any evil. Now, let's get verse 9 from Psalm 33. He said, for he spark, and it was done. That is the voice of the Lord. He said it and it's done. You don't need surgical blade to bring God's word to pass. You don't need mechanic to repair God's vehicle when the voice of the Lord has done it. You don't need anything. The voice of the Lord is enough. The voice of the Lord is enough. The Bible says he said it and it's done. I remember when I was in the church preaching and he told me one of our brothers fainted and people were washing him down on the ground and I went straight there and I picked him by the hand I said let's go to church. The voice of the Lord moved him from the ground and then strength entered the man who has no strength and he got up and followed me. We went to the church I said give him food to eat and that was all. He never remembers sickness anymore. The voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord can put strength in a weak bone. Do you know what happened in the valley of dry bone? The Lord took his servant and led him in the spirit to a valley full with dry bones. Bones of the servant of the Lord who lost their dream. Bones of the children of God, the armies of the living God. Who have lost their battles and has been slaughtered by the enemies. And the Lord led the servant of the Lord to this valley full with dry bones. And the servant of the Lord looked at this great valley. He did something. Something that no ministers has ever done. And he stood in the midst of the valley. And he heard the voice of the Lord. And the voice of the Lord is enough. The Bible says he said it and it was done. And the Lord said to the servant, Son of man, is it possible for this bone to come to life? Because God, when God speaks, it's not because he doesn't know. He speaks to know your faith. Whether you believe he could do it. And that's why he speaks. And when he told the servant, the servant looked at the bones. The Bible said, in the thought of the prophets, they were very dry. Not only were they dry, they were very dry. So dry that there is no flesh at all. Because at least if you want to grow human being, you need flesh. But this flesh does not exist. But God said to the prophets, can this bone live? He did not ask the prophet if this bone can have flesh. At least let's start from flesh level. But he asked, can this bone 
that are very dry can they live god is looking at your situation that you said my grave is covered god this situation is beyond redemption <laughs> today god is saying to you that said your situation is beyond redemption that there is redemption for you oh this program since i've been a christian i've always looked for a situation that is impossible because that is where god shows his glory i don't look for situation i have never cured headaches since i've been a christian but when i come to a situation where they said it is impossible that's where i want god to show his glory because if you have headache you can go and take paracetamol but if you have something that the doctor cannot kill then we call upon god and i went and i saw the bible said this prophet went into this valley in the spirit when god lead me in the spirit i always want god to take me to a place where they have butter and honey so that i will eat more spiritual strength and have spiritual anointing to remove matting but unfortunately that was not where god laid this prophet god took him to a valley filled with bones not bone of cow not bone of goats bone of men these bones were very dry dry skull dry hand dry leg collar bone dry all hip bone dried the prophet said the bone was so dry and he began to wonder valley thousands upon thousands on the valley of decision thousands of bones but they were dried and the lord asked him can this bone live you know when people say god thou knowest you're supposed to know what they mean you mean god i'm not sure sure but only you can tell <laughs> God, thou knowest. And God look at him. He said, this stupid man. Who told you I didn't know? If I didn't know, I would not bring you here. I know. I know he can live. But I'm asking you for your opinion. Because God needs your opinion. Your opinion matters to God because you are not a robot. I know for man, it is easier to make use of robots than to make use of human. But God did not create robots create human so god need your opinion that's why we need each other to survive nobody can say i'm an island i don't need anybody i can do all things by myself no no matter how content how rich how powerful you are you need people people are the factory where your ideas are brought to light without people your ideas are zero it doesn't matter the power the anointing you have your anointing will not work inside your bedroom. Your anointing needs people. When God take, tell you take the message to the street, He may take the message to the street. You need people to as tools to bring your miracles to life. And that is exactly why God said to the prophet, You have stayed long enough in this wilderness. Come in the spirit. Let me take you to a place where you will put your faith to you. Instead of crying for people that are dead, come, let me show you how to wake them up. Because, oh, ye sons of men, ye are God. But there is only one reason why you will die like men. Why you will fall like one of the princes is because you lack understanding. And God wants to take you to a place of knowledge. Because knowledge are better shown. And he took the man and he showed him bones that were dry. And he said, can they live? And the Lord said, Professor, prophesy to this boat. And the man of God said, I prophesy as I was commanded. The first question here is, God said, Professor, what of it? The man said, God, I'm not sure this bone can live. I'm going home. Will the bone live? No. But he, in obedience, he prophesied as he was commanded. That's the first question. Do you obey? That's what the Bible said to obey is better than sacrifice. Instead of spending three hours arguing with God on the knee, why not spend one hour believing in God? Some people stay on knee for about six hours every day. All they do is complain. God, you see now, 
Since morning, I have not eaten my breakfast. Since this afternoon, my wife just ran away. God, even my children, they are wayward. <laughs> God will look, what, what is good in your life? Let's start with that one. <laughs> you, God, there is nothing good in my life. Even the shirt I'm wearing is borrowed. God said, well, thank God you still have life. Let's start from there. Is your life also borrowed? There are people like you. Now you have body to borrow shirt and wear it on. There are people like you. They don't have one hand and one leg. And they, even if they borrow shirt, it will not fit because the hand will not come out. So, which one should we deal with first? You that still have hand to wear shirts that you borrow on. Or the one that has no hand at all and has no leg. Or the one that demon is speaking through his mouth. He doesn't know where he is. And you say, I'm not grateful. God, you have frustrated me. Some people, because they lost their job, they say, God has disappointed me. Just because they lost their job. And they forgot. There are people that have the work. They don't have leg to go there. And they don't have hand to do the work. Some people put barrel on their mouth to write. Because both hands are gone. And they still wake up in the morning and say, To God be the glory. Great things he has done. But what about you? You have hands. You have legs. You have head. You have brain to think. And you even have children. You have wife that wake, when you wake up in the morning, he comes and welcome you. You have clothes to put on. You have place to go to. You are not hungry. You are not a beggar in the streets. You don't thank God for what you have. Christians who understand God wake up in the morning and they sing praises to the Lord. Not because of what God has given them, but because of who God is. When you know who God is, you will be strong. You will do exploits. Because the Bible said, they that know their God. It didn't say those that are known of God. God knows everybody. But if you know who your God is, you will not only be strong, but you will do exploits. I remember when I make a covenant, solo covenant to God in the ministry. Before that day, I cannot afford pain. I struggle years to achieve one thing. But since that day, I made that covenant to the Lord. Till today, things change for the better. Everything that was impossible to me then, become possible. And that is exactly what happened when you make God your first and your last choice. Like the prophets who look up to the servant who was crying, Alas, we are dead. And he rather, instead of looking at the servant, he turned to God and said, God, open that young man's eyes. God, open the young man's eyes. I was in a mission and a young child ran to me, a boy of about 15 years. And I look at the child, I say, What do you want from God? Because 15 years is too young to have a wife. It's too young for anything that I can imagine that they will come for prayer for. And at that point in time, I look at the child. He look healthy to me. You are not sick. What do you want from God? And the child look at me. He says, sir, I want to be free. I want to be free. And it touched my heart. I was grieved for the past. I was frozen for three minutes. Because I don't know how to pray prayer of freedom. For the charge because i was void in the spirit that's why the bible said blessed are the poor in spirit for they shall be fed and suddenly the holy spirit fed me and i look at the charge i said look at me he looked at me i said i'm free embrace me and receive your own and immediately the charge embraced me 
instant freedom. He received freedom from the Lord who gives. The word of the Lord is sharper than any to a soul. And the word of the Lord saved that child from the spirit of death. The word of the Lord is enough. Christians who understand it, they are Christians who reach the top. God's word is available for every believer. Only if you take advantage of it. The Torah is strong, but only the righteous can run into it and be saved. The reason is that we have so many men without power. Is because men have ceased to be righteous. If you must possess power, you must embrace righteousness. Let righteousness be like ever flowing stream in your life. And you will be a source of God power. And when you know your hands are clean and your heart are clean, you can boldly come to the throne of grace at any time. Whether in the morning, in the night, and you say, God, I lift up my hands to the hills. There is always a reason why, as a Christian, I struggle to go beyond what is right to do what is right. Not because of fear of people or fear of retribution or judgment, but because I want God to look at my hands that I am on the right. And that's what you should do as a believer. That even when you know you have power to avenge yourself, do not do it. Put your trust in the Lord. Follow the principle of Christ. No matter how painful that situation is, look up to Christ. I have tried it many times. It has never failed. I have allowed people to deliberately do what is wrong to me. But God paid me back in a better way. And when the enemy thought we have gotten away, we proved to him he is nothing. The Bible says, mark a just man. The end of that man is peace. The end is what matters. But he said, the wicked flew why no man pursued them. Those wicked people, they thought by oppressing the poor, they would get richer. No, they die in penury and poverty. No matter how hard they struggle in life, they don't succeed. Because the Bible says, since I was born, now I have grown. I have never seen where the righteous was forsaken. None of their children begged for bread. That is one thing I know for a fact. That even if today, I die without nothing. My children will not beg for bread. And because I know my way pleases the Lord. What did God say to Daniel? Stay at your allotted place. At the end of your day, you will rest. If you know that your hand is clean, you can sense the views of the Lord. You can boldly say of the Lord, He is your rock and your buckler. The voice of the Lord are for the righteous. But what did He say about the wicked? What right have you to put my name in your lips? You don't have rights. Because the Bible says, Whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. When the devil came into the assembly of the children of God, God asked her, where did you come from? What happened if you are now a slave of Satan because you commit sin? And you want to go to God in prayer and you bow on your knees. God will say, where did you come from? I don't know you as one of my children. Because my children are righteous people. And do you know, 
your prayer will be an abomination. Because the Bible said the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto God. He said, though he cry, will not hear. You may stand on top of the mountain, but it is not oh God, fear that people. You are wasting your time. God will not hear. I remember when I was seeking for a place to have fellowship with God. I went to a camp in Nigeria. And while I was in the camp, I was my plan was to spend three days in supplication and prayer unto God. The first day as I lift up my voice, God said, I've already heard your prayer. Go. This is the place. Immediately I told the pastor that came with me, he looked at me. He said, I've been here for seven days, still waiting to hear from God. I said, because people are different. I didn't want to tell him that when your way pleases the Lord, he makes even your enemy to be at peace with you. That instead of spending 10 years fasting and praying, spend one day doing what is right. Don't end up like Saul, who rather sacrifice animal than obey God. Don't be the pastor that ready to give one million to church rather than to bow your knees in, in the morning and say, Father, forgive me. I know I have sinned. Which one is easier? Father, please forgive me my sins. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. Don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy that comes from your salvation. Which one is easier? To say that or to go and give $10,000 as tasks to one man of God? Who will say, don't worry, I'll be praying for you. What happens when the witch is coming the night the man is not there? What happens when those who sought your life show up in the middle of the night and the mass sticker could not save you? What happened to the bottle of oil? Before you reach there, they will make sure they talk, take your neck. Because the oil will be far away. And the water cannot save you. Be the God you served. Do you know what God said to Moses? See that I'll make you a God to Pharaoh. That is Pharaoh who Moses dread and ran away from. God made Moses a God to Pharaoh. That is what the voice of the Lord can do. He can make you a God to your enemy. Instead of you to run away, I'll see pastor in the night. In the daytime, he organized deliverance in his church. In the night, he's with a pillow. He's looking for another pastor has to sleep because of fear of the enemy. You know? Fear of the enemy. And I don't want to sleep in the house today because my body will become a drum. That they will play me till daybreak. So he ran away because of fear. Sometimes some people, because of fear, would not say the truth. They are ready to lie just because they are afraid. They know what is right, but they will not do it. That's why the fearful will be the first to be thrown into hell. Because what you fear most will come upon you, like Job. It is better to speak the truth and die than to lie and stay alive. A child of God must act like God. Because God is holy. And anyone that wants to be his children must be holy. Because he is just. Because God said, be ye perfect. For I, the Lord your God, I am a perfect God. That's why you must Hear the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is what changes situation. And for you to hear his voice, you must be able to ascend to the hills. You must be able to assess heaven. And that means you have to be born again. Because whoever is born of the flesh is flesh. And flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So for him that is born of the spirit is spirit. For the wind blew it where you listen to it. You hear the sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from. 
So is every man that is born of the Spirit. But anyone that is born of the flesh is earthly. But it was not first that which was from heaven. It was first that which was from the earth. So anybody that has been baptized to Christ must put on Christ. Let others see Jesus in you. Because when you clean inside of the cup, it must reflect the outside. The cup inside cannot be clean while the outside is dirty. When you clean inside, it will reflect on the outside. But when you clean only the outside, the inside will be full of dirt. And that's why as a child of God, spend time on purifying the outside. Brethren, today this will cut to this teaching. Tomorrow we'll continue with the part two of this teaching. God bless you. And brethren, I want to use this opportunity to advise, to admonish you to join our fellowship tomorrow. The time is 5 p.m. Where we we'll spend time to get together to study the word of God and to learn from God. In our fellowship moment, which is our prophetic hour, where we we'll use opportunity to expose God's divine prophecy and explain situation to people. If you have any prayer requests, counseling, and teaching, our links are below the video. Just write to us or text us, send us SMS on WhatsApp. And by God's grace, we will respond to you. And we will pray with you. God bless you as you participate. Brother, let us pray. Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you. Father, we thank you for whom you are. We worship you. We honor you. We thank you because of your people that have listened to the sound of this message. Father Lord, today they will no longer be meat for their enemies. Father Lord, tonight you will give the flesh eater their own flesh to eat. The blood drinker will drink their blood as it were a sweet wine. Lord, you will save your children. Father Lord, you will save your children from captivity of the enemy. You will save your children from sickness and affliction. You will save your children from pain and disease. You will save your children from affliction. And as many that are looking for help that are carrying the load that is heavier than they are lord you say come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy the laden i will give you rest lord there is rest for the oppressed lord today i bring your children to the state of rest this i ask through jesus christ our lord amen father i thank you once again i worship you i thank you for this teaching and I ask that your grace be with us, even as we continue in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen.